Hi, Gay DeRusso with Majestic Rider. So today I wanted to talk to you about buying horses off of the internet and buying horses from auction. I see this a fair amount. It's a lot of the business I get is fixing these horses that people buy online. The reason I wanna to talk to you about it is because when you're evaluating this horses online, a lot of people miss things that you know I can see or another trainer might be able to pick up when you're looking at these horses some of the salespeople will use some tricks. So when you're watching these videos, remember some of those videos were made to show you what the horse can do. And some of those videos were made to give you a dream to make you wanna buy that horse. When you're looking at the videos, what you want to make sure you're looking at is one, where are they riding the horse? Two, what's the level of the rider that's riding that horse? Then look how much um, they're pulling on the reins to see if they can ride on a looser rein. Look how much leg they're putting on the horse. And then you're trying to see what the horse uh, knows and what they're showing you. Lots of people will show you like the horse um, tarps going over the horse or these blow up things and all sorts of crazy stuff. But what you're trying to see is, are these things I'm gonna see on trail? That's nice that they're showing you that the horse is quiet um, but sometimes those horses, even though they appear quiet, once they get to you, will not be so quiet. When I'm looking and evaluating horses online for people, I always look at the horse's nostrils. Now you might think, why am I looking at their nostrils? Because lots of people run those horses around for a long time, make the horse so tired that when they do things to it, the horse will not care. The horse is so tired, he cannot breathe. So you could put a chainsaw on his back and he would most likely sit there because he's trying to gain air. So when they're doing the desensitizing, watch the horse's nostrils, see how fast he is breathing. If he's breathing really fast, they use that to help them to desensitize that horse. So it looks like he's desensitized, but he's probably not desensitized all the way, um, or he might not be very good with the object they're showing him. So be aware of that. The other thing is when you're watching them, see, does that horse go slow? Does it have a medium speed and will it go faster? As you're watching it, if they are just running it around the whole time and they are not walking and you want a horse that'll walk, this horse probably most likely is gonna be forward and goey. So they're probably not gonna walk very much. So it probably would not be the best horse for you. As they're riding them, if they have no leg on that horse, that means that horse is sensitive. Same thing, that means that if you put leg on that horse, it's probably gonna go even faster and that probably would not be the horse for you. If when they're riding it, they are holding it a fair amount or those reins are tight or that horse's head is way up, that horse is probably too forward for you. When you're looking at those things, you have to be very aware of how the horse is going and how they're riding it. The same thing when you're looking at that horse's gait. Are they helping that horse a lot to stay in the gait or do they have it sometimes on a looser rein and the horse is just gating? If it's on a looser rein, it can hold its gait then of course it's probably easier for you. If they're holding it or they're doing lots of things with their hands to keep it in gait, then you will need to learn how to ride that horse to keep it in gait because it's most likely not gonna do it completely on its own. Also look at the horse's feet. You can pause the videos, which people don't realize on YouTube, pause the videos and look how long that horse's foot is. If that horse has a long foot, that is helping that horse to gait. So you have to realize when that horse shows up, if you pull its shoes off, cut its feet down and make it barefoot, it's probably not gonna gait the same. So you have to either be aware of that and keep that horse going the same way, or you're gonna have to retrain it to gait correctly without that um, long foot. Also look at the horse's shoes and you can ask the sellers, like I wanna see a picture of his shoes. I wanna see a close up at that video of that horse walking. Because if he has a heavy shoe on, he most likely will need that heavy shoe to gait the way he is in the video. So same thing, you'll have to um, either help reteach him to gait, which if you don't know how to gait is very difficult, um, or you'll need a trainer to help you. So you need access to one. When they're riding them, if you're gonna ride in the arena and you wanna do arena work and you wanna do some slow work and some fast work and you wanna have control and you wanna do turn on the forehand and haunches and side pass, you need to see that all on the video. Because lots of people will tell you, yes, the horse can do this, he's fine in the arena, blah, blah, blah. But where you're riding, you're riding with barrel racers or you're riding with rainers or dressage people or jumping people. And where they were riding in the arena was in their backyard where there's no other horses.
So there's a big difference when that horse shows up, he's gonna be a little freaked out because he's not used to all those things going around. So again, if you're gonna ride in the arena, see a video of the horse riding in the arena because then you can also look at their arena, where it is and what that horse is used to. If you're gonna ride the horse on the trail, you need to see a video with the horse on the trail. If you're gonna ride with bikes, you need to see bikes around the horse. If you're gonna ride with dogs, you need to see dogs around the horse. You're gonna ride with hikers, you need to see hikers, traffic, etc. You need to see all those things. If you're gonna ride with other horses, what do you need to see? You need to see that horse ridden with other horses. If you're gonna ride alone, you need to see that horse ridden alone. Everybody's um, selling to make money, so you have to remember that. And what they're trying to do is sell you a dream. And so lots of these videos will show the horses. It's not like they're hiding it. You just don't know what you're looking at. But I see lots of videos where the horses are out of control. They're going uh, way too forward. Their head is straight up in the air. The rider is pulling on that horse the entire time. They have no control. The horse doesn't know how to gate well and the horse is petrified. You can see it in their eyes. If you look at them close enough, their eyes are usually like this instead of calm. If you see they're riding the horse and it's on a looser rein, they're walking and then they're going fast and then they're coming back to a walk or they canter and then they walk. That's a better sign that that horse has more control. You wanna see that horse stop, you wanna see it back up. If you have to do gates, you wanna see it doing gates or at least side passing because you need to side pass to open gates. And so you can't expect a horse to go up to a gate if he doesn't know how to side pass or you don't know how to side pass because you have to give the horse the right information and the right cues for him to be able to do it correctly. It, even if he knows how to side pass, if you don't know how, he won't be able to open the gate and will probably bang your leg into the gate and you're gonna get pissed thinking the horse doesn't know how to open gates, but it's you actually giving him the wrong cues. So see, there's many things you need to know, the horse needs to know. When you talk to these sellers, be very careful if they won't answer your questions or they don't get back to you much, because that usually means that they're not telling you everything that they should should honestly tell you, but that's why they call people out there horse traders um, or buyer beware. Some of them will tell you exactly like this is a green horse, which means it is untrained or not trained very well. And you're going to need a trainer to help you. But in your brain, you might not be hearing what they're saying. So if they say that horse needs groundwork, he's not very friendly. That means you might need a trainer or you might have to do a lot of groundwork to help this horse. Um, if they say he's spooky with bikes or he's never been seen a bike, you need to be very careful when you first see bikes and maybe can walk them or have someone who can ride really well go through it first. So there's lots of things to be aware of. I always tell people get lots of videos, get lots of pictures, see what their feet look like so you're aware of the shoes they're coming with. I've had lots of people buy them, you know, on the internet or something, and then they contact me to help them. And I always ask about their feet and they go, oh yeah, I don't think they did their feet at all. They were super long. And I go, no, that's how they were riding them. They use that to help them to gate. So now that you shorten their foot up, we have to teach this horse to gate naturally without that shoe helping him because the, the horse just doesn't know. And he's not gonna be able to go as fast because he has to learn to do it correctly. A lot of times when they put a heavy shoe on, that horse, the heavy shoes are in the front, the horse was probably pacey. If the heavy shoes were in the back, the horse was usually trotty. So those are things you need to be aware of because when you change it, you can totally lose the gait. Or if they use certain angles on that horse's foot to get them to gait, which people do, then if you do not keep those angles, sometimes you will lose that gait. So again, you have to be able to have someone help you to teach that horse to gait correctly or just keep what they sent the horse with and just follow it until you understand how you can get that horse to gait. And then maybe later on you can change its um, shoeing. Um, but always remember if you're gonna see bikes or cars or traffic, you're gonna ride alone, you're gonna ride in groups to see videos of those things happening. And so, you might think, you know, see a video with things blowing around, they're cracking whips, they're, they got three people riding the horse, they got somebody crawling underneath it, they're in the water swimming with the horse. Those things aren't gonna help you, okay? Who rides around with things blowing up like this? It just shows you that the horse, you know, is calmer, unless its nostrils are flying like this, that it just means the horse is calm and he doesn't care about the thing blowing around because he just wants some air. So. You want to see things that you're really going to see on the trail. And that's the most important thing. They can pull out a phone and videotape it, 
um, especially if it's an expensive horse. If it's cheaper horse, yeah, they might not want to do it. They, the $2,000 horse, they're like, whatever, you come and see it or you don't come and see it, I'm not going to videotape it. But a real expensive horse, you know, something $8,000 and up, there needs to be videotape proving what they're saying. And then you need to ask them, what level rider does he need? And you need to explain to them how you ride. And then you need to explain to them your fear level because everybody's different. So some horses are great if they have a confident rider and some horses are horrible if they do not have a confident rider. So, and it's the same horse, okay? So I can get on a horse and take it through lots of things. But if I put somebody on it that was scared and the horse is scared, that's not gonna match well together because they're gonna be two scared beings with each other and they're just gonna be scaring each other the entire time. So if you're not confident, you need a confident horse, okay? If you ride well and you're confident and relaxed, you can have a horse that's not so confident and you'll be able to get it through things, okay? If you're gonna ride alone, then sometimes a more uh, forward horse um, will be braver not always, but, but a lot of times the really brave horses are the more goy horses and they're, they're the lead horses and the competitive horses. So they do great alone. But when you put them in groups and you try to put them in the back, they get very competitive and sometimes rear up and do all sorts of bad stuff. That doesn't make them a bad horse. They're just in the wrong situation or they haven't learned um, to ride in groups well. So that's why you wanna tell them where you're riding most of the time. And I always ask people stuff. They think I'm crazy because I'm asking so many things, but I don't want my horses passed around. I want them to work out as best as they can. If you're riding in large groups most of the time, then you'd rather have a horse that's happy following, okay? If you get that lead horse and you're riding in a big group, he's gonna be a pain. He's gonna be pulling on you and doing all sorts of stuff. But if you get a horse that's a little bit like more nervous and would rather be behind another horse, when you're in a group, he's most likely gonna be happy as he can be and won't care about much, okay? So you need to know that thing. And if you're only gonna ride alone once in a while, so you gotta push him or maybe get, a hand, get off and hand walk him past something. As you become a better rider and more confident, you'll be able to get him through more stuff. So remember those things. If you're riding alone, uh, braver horse, more forward would be good. Um, if you're riding in groups, calmer, more push to go would be better and work out for you. But again, if you don't ask those things, they won't tell you. A lot of these people that ride in Tennessee, Kentucky, all these different places, they've been riding all their lives. They like to ride fast. They don't use mounting blocks. They don't stand still to get on. They get on and off they go. And in a lot of videos, you'll see them racing each other. You'll see them, um, you know, gating pretty fast all over the pastures. And those riders look as calm as can be because that's how they ride all the time. But if you're getting the horse and you want to walk, you got a problem. <laughs> so you have to be aware of those things when you're getting these horses and evaluate them correctly. So the auction, same things. These people are selling a dream. So they're not going to show you any bad videos. They're not going to tell you that horse is spooky or anything like that. They're just going to show you a video of this horse doing some stuff. It's going to look pretty. And um, they might not even know the horse well if it's on an auction or anything about it because um, some of them are consignment horses. So they're just doing the advertising and the bidding. So the price starts low, it feeds you in, and then it slowly starts building up. On these auction signs, sometimes there's real people bidding, sometimes there's fake people bid bidding to get the prices up. So you gotta be aware of that also. I think it's fine to spend a lot of money for a nice horse that's trained. I do not think it is fine to spend a lot of money on a horse that is not trained. So in those videos, you need to see, does the horse stand still for mounting? Does it back up? Does it side pass? Does it open gates? If you're riding with bikes in those things, you need to see those things as well. If they're just showing that horse gating back and forth, um, you need to ask them, can I bring this horse back if it doesn't work for me? Because the most likely answer is no. <laughs> Um, can I get a real vet check on this horse before he comes to me so I can make sure he's not blind and has two eyes? The most likely answer is no. They'll tell you he has been uh, health checked by a vet, but that's not a real vet check, so you know. That's not a lameness check. Um, so that horse can still show up and have problems. If he doesn't have papers, um, he could be totally wrong age than they said. So you can think you're getting a six-year-old and it shows up and your vet says this is a 10-year-old horse because he has no um, papers and you didn't have anybody there to actually check it and prove it. Even if the horse has papers, you have to look at it. Like the paper says he has three white socks, but this horse that showed up has one white sock. Ooh, 
it's a different horse. He has papers, just not his papers. So again, you have to be aware of the things. Did they lie? No, the horse has papers. They just didn't, maybe they didn't look either. And so you have to be aware of all these things and check them ahead of time to make sure. And that's part of your responsibility as you're buying. So I always try to tell people, I don't like auctions because I don't, you know, these horses go for a lot of money. I think some of them aren't trained correctly. I think they come in and out and sometimes the sellers don't know them well, maybe they do. And um, uh, that's great. If, if your auction is like that, please don't be offended. But I see the people on the other end and I see the people have problems. I see these horses get passed around. I see the horses get ulcers. I see the horses petrified. I see all these bad things because they've taken these horses that aren't trained and they sell them to somebody. And sometimes they've taken that person's all their money and now that person has no money to get help. And that's the sad thing. So hopefully this video will help you to make better decisions, to look at the horses more closely I evaluate videos for people all the time. It's not that expensive. You need help for me to look at it for something you're gonna buy. But what I can't tell you is that horse's personality. All I can tell you is from the video. And so again, when you're asking about these horses, ask lots of questions, ask them, you know, how many trail rides has he been on? I've even seen people here sell horses, you know, it's great, it's great trail horse. And then it's not and then the person calls me up to help him with the horse and I call the trainer up and I go, okay, he said he was a great trail horse. How many trail rides has he been on? Oh, 10. And so you think he's a great trail horse because he's just been on 10 trail rides in his life. Yeah, he did really well on those trail rides. Well, maybe he hasn't seen everything. Maybe they just rode him in the woods. And so when a turkey jumps out or a deer or a dog or a car goes by, that horse freaks out because he hasn't seen everything. So. You got to really ask the correct questions or most sellers are not willing to tell you the answers offhand. Okay, so just be very careful. Ask the questions, get the videos, get the pictures, make sure you have backup for help when that horse comes. And um, if you got nothing else, again, you can contact me. I'll try to help you as much as I can. Okay. All right. Hope that helps.